Hello, you guys. My name is Mariah. I gave my life to God when I was 18. I'm now 22, and I just speak the word of God to people. I try to encourage you guys, and today we are going to be speaking about the fruits of the Spirit. No, it's not a coconut. There's a song that my little brother is always singing in his class. Um, it says, the fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. The fruit of the Spirit is not a grape. So, no, we're not talking about actual fruit when we speak about the fruits of the Spirit. But the fruits of the Spirit is, I have them written down right here, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So there are nine in total. So there are nine in total. Excuse the glare in my glasses. We're going to get straight into the word. In Matthew 7, 17, it says, A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Paul was the first one to mention the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians. We all know that fruit takes a little while to produce. It takes a long time. A fruit tree, if it's starting from a seed, it has to grow from just the seed into the roots, a little sprout, and then it becomes a tree and eventually it yields its fruit. So this is something that if you just gave your life to God, I'm so happy that you're watching this video. If this is something that maybe you've never heard of or don't really understand, I want to give clarity on this topic. The fruit of the Spirit is something that grows over time. It's not a destination. It is a journey, as somebody that I watch on YouTube said. So you're never going to just be perfect in all of these areas. You might be really good naturally at showing patience with people, or that might be the complete opposite of you. You might be lacking in self-control which is one of the fruits of the spirit you might be really good with showing faithfulness and relationships and showing up for people but you're not so good with peace in your mind peace is another fruit of the spirit so this is something that we're gonna go through as a journey it's gonna take time to master these things and we can always get better the perfect example of someone who always showed and displayed the fruits of the Spirit perfectly is Jesus. He was the best example of bearing fruits of the Spirit. He was always patient with people. He always showed faithfulness. He never has let us down to this day. He has kept his promises. He keeps his word. People mocked him on the cross while he was hanging there dying and people were spitting at him. He showed self-control by not retaliating. He showed self-control by enduring that torture and not having angels come and save him as the Bible says that he could have. He showed peace with even his enemies. He showed peace with everyone. He was kind. He was filled with joy and the Holy Spirit towards sinners and religious people alike. He was gentle. He showed kindness to the widows. He showed kindness to prostitutes. He showed kindness to everybody that he came in contact with. Even people that frustrated him, like the Pharisees who were very religious and who were always accusing him of doing something wrong. Though he corrected them and he rebuked them, he did it gently. He did it out of love. So Jesus was the perfect example of displaying all nine fruits of the Spirit. God can help us to do that as well, to begin this journey or to continue in this journey, but we have to make the conscious decision. We can decide. God can help you have self-control, but you can decide to have self-control. I just want you to know that the longer a person follows Jesus, the more fruit they are going to bear, the more fruit they are going to show. Like when you look at a pastor and you're like, wow, I love how he is just so in tune with God. I love that he is, he knows his word. He's doing what the Bible says. It's because he's allowed his fruit to grow. So 
People act like Jesus and their fruits show the more that they follow him. The Bible says that even sinners, even sinners show kindness to people who are kind to them. Even sinners give people money if they know that they're going to get it back. But us as Christ followers, as Christians, we're called to show love to everybody. So I, I beg to ask the question, are you showing love to your parents? Are you showing love to your children, to that co-worker at work that doesn't really treat you well, that maybe mocks your religion, that always has a bad attitude? Show them love. When you remember to love people the way that Jesus loved people, regardless of how they treat you, that is showing the fruits of the Spirit. When you feel joy or peace, regardless of a situation that just came about that should bring confusion and sadness, but you stay steadfast in your peace and your joy, that is a fruit of the Spirit. But let's just go over the nine fruits of the Spirit again because you can't hear it enough. Show love to people around you. The true you is who you are when you're at home. So make sure that you're showing love to your children regardless of how they're acting. If they're being rebellious or if they're being good, if they're listening or not listening, if your spouse is being kind to you or being harsh with you, if your family members are acting out because maybe they're not saved, regardless, show them love. That is the first fruit of the Spirit, and I think it's because you need love for the rest of the fruits of the Spirit. You need it for all nine. Think about a fruit like a apple or a orange, a lemon, something with a lot of seeds, a pomegranate. One fruit can produce so many seeds. So you showing your fruits of the Spirit, you showing love, joy, and peace to people, whether they deserve it or not, you're going to yield so many seeds that are going to be planted and scattered. The Bible says that when we sow our seeds, that we get a harvest. We, if we endure, it's not always easy to do this, beloved, but it is always good. It is always worth it. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. If we go a couple of verses before that, it says those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Galatians 5.24 says those who belong to Jesus Christ have nailed their passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Joy peace again having peace in the midst of a crazy circumstance whether that's with family at home maybe a death something that should rise up confusion and anger acting out of your flesh acting out of what you want to do when you show peace that is the fruit of the spirit number four is patience show patience to people who don't deserve it show patience to your pets show patience to that co-worker that is unkind show patience with your pastors show patience with yourself show patience with god's timing the fifth one is kindness Let's be like God. Let's be like Jesus. How many times has God came through for you regardless of how much you don't deserve it? Be kind to, like I said, your pets. Be kind to your co-workers. Be kind to people at church. Be kind to strangers. The Bible says that the biggest way to display love is to show love to the widows and to the orphans. So kindness is so important to Jesus is deciding that no matter how you are to me i am going to be kind to you i am going to put your needs above mine so that is number five the fruits of the spirit build upon each other so the sixth one is goodness goodness is generous acts you're putting that fifth one kindness into action you're showing it through the things that you do be good to people 
there is somebody in my life who does not like me whatsoever and I am called to love this person because they are um, a relative to my husband and regardless of how much this person does not like me for Christmas I get them a gift putting that kindness which was again the fifth fruit of the spirit goodness putting that kindness into action let it be displayed the greek word for goodness is agothosune agothosune so let us be agothosune <laughs> i don't know if i'm using that right the seventh fruit of the spirit and that is going to be faithfulness have you ever met somebody or maybe you are that person have been that person that is just not a person who keeps their word if somebody asks you to go somewhere and you're like yeah i'm gonna go you know i'll be there for bible study i'll be there for church i'll be there for you they kind of figure mm, most likely not they know that you're most likely not going to keep that word god was the opposite of that throughout the test of time jesus has remained faithful to his word to the things that he has told us to his love for us the unconditional love so the root word of faithfulness is faith believing in god believing in his power trusting in his promises believing in god you show your faithfulness by how you go about your life are you reliable are you somebody that people can depend on that people can count on and that is just a little summary that's just the tip of the iceberg for faithfulness so the eighth fruit of the spirit is going to be listed in the bible as gentleness but it's often referred to as meekness and when you hear that word you might think of weakness but it's actually power under control it's knowing that you have power but it being controlled by humility and humbleness. So again, meekness, being kind. For the sake of God's will here on earth, we need to show meekness. We need to show humbleness. It's not weakness, it's gentleness. And lastly, we have number nine, which is self-control. Self-control is so important because without it, I think it's the last one listed because you cannot accomplish any of the previous eight without self-control. You can't show love to people who don't deserve it without self-control. You can't show patience to people and your kids without self-control your husband, friends, family who are unkind. You can't show gentleness without self-control. You can't show faithfulness and showing up for other people without self-control. Disciplining your time, dedicating your time, you need self-control. And again, Jesus was the perfect display of all of these things. He had self-control and he shows it to us every single day by simply not giving us the punishments that we deserve for the sins that we commit, for the ways that we hurt him. He has so much self-control. So if you want me to pray over you to begin to display these things in your walk with God, whether it just started or you've been walking with him for a while and you just want more fruit to be produced, then let me go ahead and pray for you. Definitely make sure to check out the video that I just posted because I pray that you can bear much fruit, fruits of the Spirit. I hope that this helped you to understand this topic. And if you have any questions concerning your faith or walk with God, definitely leave it down below so that I can make a video on it or leave you a response. And remember that God will make it all work together. God makes everything work together for those that love him. So trust in that. And until next time, love you guys.